I am California of the past. I am California of the past. I am California of the past. I'm Brian Copeland. Um, I've lived here in San Leandro since 1972. I'm uh, a writer, an actor, comedian, radio host, television host. I uh, wrote the book and the play, Not a Genuine Black Man, uh, based upon my experiences growing up here in town. Uh, I've got a new play that will debut in January in San Francisco called The Waiting Period. I host the radio show on KGO Radio on Sundays. I've been doing that for, gosh, 20 years now. And I have a television show on uh, ABC Channel 7, weekday afternoons, called 7 Live. I was born uh, in Akron, Ohio, um, oldest of three at the time that we, uh, oldest of, there were three of us? There were three of us at the time that we left and came from Akron. Uh, my father was at Fort Hood in Texas. We moved to Texas uh, about 1970 and then uh, ended up out here, um, Berkeley for a little while, and then Hayward, and then in 1972 we moved to town. Yeah. Um, my mother it was all was kind of a social climber. Was always trying to look at, at uh, trying to find ways to, to put us in a, a, a better uh, social and uh, economic and, and better advantaged situation in any way she possibly could. And at the time, you know, San Leandro was looked at. At least that was the, the, the at least the uh, impression that I had as a you know six, seven, eight year old was it was looked at as a prestigious place to live, you know, living in, in Hayward as we did over, uh, we were on Sleepy Hollow over by, uh, uh, over by uh, St. Rose Hospital and by the Shasta plant. So, um, you know, we would go out and have, go to church and go to Sunday brunch and those things. And then my mom would like to go and drive around and look at houses and we would come here a lot of times and look around. So um, I, I, I think, you know, that that's probably the reason that she chose this place. Growing up here, um, and as you, you'll deal with any place, you know, as an African American male, where there are not many African Americans, you get DWBs. You know, we go driving while black, you know, and it, you don't have to be driving. You know, um, my son deals with it now. It's uh, he's my son's 22, and he says, "Dad, it's ridiculous." You know, driving from my apartment to the store. You know, he got stopped uh, uh, down in uh, in Pleasanton. You know, coming out of the mall. Uh, just, you know, no reason, just a, on a pretext. But here for me, I had no idea because it never happened to me before. And I was eight years old and we'd been here for, uh, we'd been here for about a week, I think. And, you know, it spent the week unpacking and I was kind of moping around because we'd moved a lot. And uh, my mom tells me to go to the, you know, grab my bat, ball. There's a park nearby, she, Washington Manor Park. She said, go find the park and meet some kids and introduce yourself and make some friends. So I'm walking down the street with my bat and my ball and, um, a uh, old blue conver convertible pulls up uh, next to me. It's got six teenage kids in it, three boys, three girls, and they're wearing Letterman's jackets that say, boys, Letterman's jackets that say rebels. Now, um, I subsequently found out that they were San Lorenzo High kids, and San, Lorenzo's high, San Lorenzo High School's theme until the 90s was the Confederacy. They were the rebels. The teachers parked on Mason Dixon Lane. That's what they called it. There were Confederate flags all over everything, the uniforms, and if you look at the old yearbooks, even from the early, uh, late 60s, early 70s, and, and, and before that, they didn't have a homecoming king and homecoming queen. They had Miss Southern Belle and Colonel Reb. And if you look at it, it's on the football field, and it's, you know, <laughs> the homecoming king's in a big Confederate colonel's outfit, and, and the, uh, the homecoming queen is dressed like Scarlett O'Hara with the big hoop skirt. So, you know, it, it was crazy. And they it literally, I had a friend of mine, um, who, who's uh, P Penny Peck. Penny Peck uh, works for the, the library. And uh, she was the editor of the paper, I think, back in 1970, 71, and, uh, at, at San Lorenzo High. And she started a movement to try to get that Confederate stuff removed because she said it's offensive, it's racist, and so forth. And uh, she was ostracized. She said her parents got kicked out of the bridge club, and that was some serious stuff. Her parents got kicked out of the Brits Club because she wanted all this competitive. So, so these kids, so I'm walking out the street and, they, and they, these kids pull up in, you know, in this convertible and uh, uh, we have an exchange of words. I ask where the park is, they call me the N-word and it ends up with them chasing me down the street uh, in their car. They're chasing me. 
uh, and I'm running across lawns and so forth. And I come, I, I make a right hand turn and I see a police car and I think, you know, I wasn't taught to be afraid of the police. The police are your friends. And uh, I, there's a police car, so I think I'm all right, I think I'm saved. So I, I run towards the, the police car, you know, I got my bat and my ball in my hand. And this tall blonde cop gets out, he's, you know, he's wearing mirrored sunglasses and, you know, that whole 70s deal. And uh, as I run towards him, he puts his hand on his gun. He puts his hand on his gun. And uh, he, you know, I'm, I'm thinking he's going to help me out, but all he wants to know is, you know, not who's chasing me, not why I'm running, but what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Um, and I told him where it is that I lived, and uh, he wants me to show him. So he puts me, you know, he takes my bat and ball and uh, gestures towards the police car. I reach for the door, and he says, just a minute. And he has me raise my arms, and he pats me down. I'm eight years old. Then uh, he, he uh, puts me in the back seat, has my bat and ball. I direct him to the apartment complex we lived in. And uh, he knocks on the door, my mom answers, you know, so you know, she sent me out to go play here and come back with a police officer. And uh, he tells her, I've been running around the neighborhood causing trouble and I've been using my bat as a weapon, which is very serious and she needs to keep an eye on me from here on in. So that was kind of my, my baptism by fire. I, I'm still here. I've been here for, it'll be 40 years, August the 2nd next year. It'll be 40 years that I've been here in this town, you know, and uh, it's changed. And that's why I'm, that's why I'm still here.